Hey everyone, Joshua Kirk here with you once again, and now it's time for episode 198 of Album of the Day, which, uh, uh, it makes good sense I'm wearing this Yep Rock t-shirt, Yep Rock Records t-shirt in this video, because, uh, for today's album review, I'm gonna be talking about the latest album from a California via Nashville singer-songwriter, uh, who for a long time has been making music uh, with his former band, Grant Lee Buffalo, uh, and now currently is making his own solo work under the Yep Rock Records label out of North Carolina. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the artist known as Grant Lee Phillips, uh, and I'm here to review his uh, most recent album, his second album for Yep Rock, and it was just released this year on February 23rd, 2018. And the album is called Wittershins. And as you can see, this is the vinyl right here, uh, which I got this from Yep Rock because I uh, signed up to get uh, to be a vinyl completist uh, for Yep Rock. Uh, uh, for Yep Rock. Uh, so, like, I have been getting sent the vinyl of all the albums they've released since the beginning of the year. And this one, along with the Born Ruffians album, which is also really good, uh, we're the first couple that I got sent to me. And I also recently I uh, got all of them on CD too, since uh, good news is I'm still able to get the CDs of everything too. Uh, really nice album cover. And there's the back. Grant Lee Phillips produced this himself, but handling the mixing on this album is Tucker Martin, who's most, recent, most recently been working with artists such as uh, Case Lang Bears, The Decemberists, and My Morning Jacket. Um, and there's 12 tracks on the record, and there's a hidden track at the end too that's not credited here. So the album as a total, plus the bonus track, is over 41 minutes, so uh, definitely pretty short compared to his last album, which where the songs were pretty long usually. Um, anyway, these are the lyrics photo here. And uh, this is uh, side A. And let me show you, this is on a limited edition clear vinyl, which is also the same kind of vinyl I got with the Born Ruffians LP. And uh, there's side B. And that's the vinyl packaging for uh, the new album from Grantley Phillips called Wittershins. Now, as you know, uh, if you've seen my top 50 albums of 2016, along with uh, my review of The Narrows, uh, you pretty much know that I love that album. It's definitely uh, uh, really shows him progressing as a songwriter. Uh, the hooks are fantastic, uh, and also the production sounds very nice. It's got kind of a natural sound where a lot of it was recorded live uh, in a studio in Nashville called Easy Eye Sound. The studio owned by Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys. Um, Keys. Here for this record he records at the legendary Sound Emporium in Nashville and uh, Emporium, uh, and uh, goes to Flora Playback and Recording in Portland to help mix this record with Tucker Martin and uh, and the result is actually like in my opinion a record that uh, is so well done and put together and hooky that I will admit I actually kind of like this record maybe a bit more than his last record uh, record I mean th this record's a little more stripped back it's not quite as Americana it's definitely a little more kind of straight ahead like rock <laughs> rock and some elements of bro pop and Yes, actually, and yes, folk and Americana do play a pretty significant role on certain moments here. Uh, Miss Betsy probably being the most obvious here. Um, 
you know, the most obvious here, uh, but it's definitely uh, uh, very well put together, and it really does show that Grantley Phillips definitely has kind of a good sort of pop song, has the pop song science down here on this record, uh, this record, uh, which is shown right off the bat with the opening track, Walk in Circles, which was the song that teased the record, and definitely the perfect one to tease it because it's got an incredible hook on there. The guitar hook is instantly going to get stuck in your head. Uh, the production and mixing sounds great. And uh, also, the songwriting on here shows Grantley Phillips sort of tackling some more kind of darker, more cryptic sort of subjects. Uh, I mean, uh, there is definitely kind of a little bit of sort of folklore and stuff like that. A little bit of folklore and uh, stuff like that incorporated into the lyrics, but also lyrics that sort of comment on society, like, uh, society, like, say he, he'd rather walk in circles with the witches and dance by the waxing moon than, eh, than rally with the, with the righteous goons and uh, stuff like that. Hmm. Like that. It's definitely a great opening track for the album, too. Uh, too. And then we have the song Unruly Mobs, which is criminally short, but at the same time, definitely uh, still uh, a plenty engaging moment on the album. Uh, on, on the album. Uh, album. This is another song where I feel the production is definitely sounding very lavish. I mean, it's a more stripped back record. You won't hear a shred of pedal steel like you did on the previous record. Uh, but instead, you get uh, some beautiful uh, Mellotron strings along with some piano in there, uh, which uh, give the song its nice little bit of oomph over its uh, oomph over its kind of rhythmic guitars, bass, and drums, which kind of syncopate and are timed nicely, so that way they don't just feel like they're just jumping around all over the place. Uh, Place. And I love kind of the poetic curveballs here on this track. Uh, <laughs> poetic curveballs on this track. Uh, track. Uh, but it also has a really nice hook uh, with the line of, uh, line of call the cops. One of them is thrown a dish. Louie dear, you should be watching all of this, uh, which eventually does transition into a really nice guitar solo. Uh, and then we have the more kind of melancholy King of Catastrophes, which uh, definitely is one of my favorite tracks on the record because uh, definitely one of the most comprehensive uh, on the album. The, so, uh, like, and sort of talking about uh, how and sort of bringing some very powerful messages, like when he reads too many books, uh, you know, he can't ignore the omens or the warning signs that he notices uh, since once he's done doing all the reading. Um, yeah, and he definitely puts a lot of insight into lines like, it doesn't take a lot of might to picture some calamity. That's very true right there, Mr. Phillips. Um, Is, and then, of course, a great hook. Love the uh, kind of spooky vocal harmonies uh, in the hook on this track and the way that... And also, it definitely has a little bit of a beatles -y sort of vibe uh, with its kind of psychedelic guitar playing along with... Uh, guitar playing along with its kind of somber Mellotron flute samples as well. <laughs> so, and also, I do really like the line... You're free to room if you just, you're free to leave the room if you just cringe at words like tyranny. And then we have Something's Gotta Give, which has a little more of a bluesy sort of vibe to it. Uh, vibe to it. I, it has that lovely, uh, like it has that sort of lovely, uh, lovely gloomy slide guitar on there. Uh, and then, of course, I love how in the chorus uh, we get this kind of uh, the chorus we get this kind of loose, uh, jammy guitar guitar riff. Hmm. Guitar riff. Hmm. 
So, and I also, uh, let me write something. Uh, and the fall, and I do really like the following track on there, Scared Stiff, which, Stiff is one of the fastest, uh, most kind of, uh, catchiest tracks on the album, but definitely, uh, uh, not very upbeat in terms of the lyrics. I mean, the lyrics do talk about, uh, this, uh, sort of talk about, uh, these, these fears that he's feeling, like, uh, every second of his life, and, uh, life, and trying to learn how to behave, uh, in, in the home of the rule, in the home of the brave, uh, Brave. And I like how the song gets its title from some classic horror comedy film. Uh, so, film, because uh, that sort of inspiration kind of makes sense in uh, the context of the lyrics of the song. Um, so, and I love some of his, like, uh, and I love some of his, like, curveball, uh, tongue in cheek phrases that he throws in there, like, kaput! I love that. Mm -hmm. Put, uh, as he brings some very kind of urgent messages of no, uh, we're all taught to be scared straight, no clawing back your privacy. Let's see. Uh, then we have Miss Betsy, which is uh, definitely uh, one, uh, one of the most clever written songs on the album, uh, and definitely the closest that comes to his material off of the Narrows on here. Um, on here with all the kind of folky instrumentation uh, and also love some of the uh, different uh, and also some fantastic uh, instrumentation on this track the kind of this, uh, there's a little bit of swagger there's all kinds of hand percussion going on like I, I think I heard something that uh, kind of sounds like a household object that's uh, being played with a stick or something like that and then also there's the use of a pump organ on here too uh, get on here too, and it's got some really nice vocal harmonies on here from uh, Jerry Rowe, who is the drummer for this album, uh, in the chorus. And also, it has a really nice sort of chorus where you can hang on to every word and feel like singing along. Uh, long started talking about how there's little time for mischief a little time for games, uh, games, uh, even though the character does say at the end of the song that when he grows up he wants to be like this character that, uh, he's referring to that he's, uh, kind of, uh, you know, pretty vague about, uh, just calling her Miss Betsy, but at the same time, uh, still definitely, uh, uh, so, but still definitely, uh, uh, some lyrics on here that show a good sense of humor as well while still uh, bringing some urgency to the table. Uh, like it's definitely got some wry sense of humor that I definitely do applaud uh, Grantley Phillips for doing here. Um, so, and then we have The Wilderness, which is another one of my favorite songs on there. Uh, I mean, just uh, awesome. Uh, I mean, just awesome drumming on the track. and. Some great guitar playing on there too, and I also do love uh, the kind of haunting, and also it just has some beautifully haunting vocal harmonies that kind of rush in in the chorus. Chorus, the ha ah, ha, ah, ah. it's just incredible when he hits the high notes on there, and he does it without coming off as like uh, obnoxious or uh, like or or a little or overkill. He totally kills it with those notes right there on this track. Um, track, and it's, and kind of the way that they're recorded with significant amount of, uh, uh reverb, uh, definitely makes them sound, uh, very, like, immersive and beautiful over the kind of, uh, uh over the kind of en high-energy rock and roll vibe on this track. Um, Track and talking about uh, the, how we experience strange movements in the darkness uh, as in our heart begins to pound. Pound, and we may have crawled our way out of the ocean uh, so that we could stand and beat our chests, but the coldness in our veins still courses. We never left, 
the wilderness. And uh, this, so this is a song that kind of continues some of the uh, uh, themes uh, that happen in songs like Scared Stiff of uh, kind of uh, how sometimes we just kind of feel a bit overtaken by fear and darkness and even though we may say we've left the wilderness in reality that it's always that part of us that's always going to stay there. <laughs> there and it can be applied to anything it can be applied to maybe life or things going on in society uh, which uh, he tackles very nicely on the track another another than boom uh, a track that sort of uh, is probably uh, I wouldn't say it's like explicitly political, but it definitely does sort of have a bit of a political theme to it, sort of uh, talking about how every day when you turn on the news, society's unglued, glued, and you wonder how we've ever got along at all, uh, long and how everything's in a state of disarray, uh, and talking about uh, lobbing missiles in the sea and stuff like that, uh, but in other words, it's still unfortunately a normal day because that's just the times we're living in right now. Um, hmm. uh, and sort of talk and sort of liken any sort of likens driving to work now is kind of like a merciless commute uh, as you kind of listen to all the gloom and doom on uh, the radio radio and how if you have a pounding in your head it's just the drums of dread uh, because it's the rhythm of another normal day so the so the title another another than boom actually really works if you kind of look at the concept of the song and also great production on the song too uh, and the key change that it goes into towards the end is awesome uh, <laughs> is awesome and I uh, love the incorporation like always I love the incorporation of uh, the Mellotron strings and uh, that pump organ as well <laughs> organ as well which really does show uh, uh, Phillips's musicianship because he plays literally all the guitar parts and all the keyboard parts and sings every vocal part on this album with basically uh, Jerry Rowe and Lex Price providing the bass and the drums to it. Um, drums to it. And then we, following this, we do have uh, the track uh, Totally, Totally You, Gunslinger, which uh, is another one of the teaser tracks, even though if I had to pick my least favorite out of the teaser tracks, I'd have to say this one. I mean, the, the lyrics kind of aren't quite as memorable or as, like, uh, memorable as uh, some of the other moments here it kind of basically got kind of, it kind of delves into some you know cliches about like do you want to give into it and do you want to be like those people that are like slinging guns all the time time even though he does uh, bring up some pretty smart points on here like in the line of don't wear it off to the gym or fire it off fire it off in anger uh, Anger, uh, musically, I do think it is uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good, even though I would say probably uh, uh, the melody isn't quite as uh, catchy or as, like, uh, this song basically just kind of has less memorable qualities than some of the other songs on here, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, fine, you know, it's still a pretty good song. Um, song, uh, then we have History Has Their Number, which probably, which probably has one of the most commanding messages on the entire album, uh, just on the album, uh, album sort of oh pulling you in right off the bat of lines of you can't live in anger, nobody can, uh, and it's not for you to shoulder the hateful urn, whatever comes of them, and it's just a very beautiful ballad. I mean, uh, when he. I mean, I love that part, uh, like, after the verses where he, uh, uh, where he, like, puts his own, like, kind of falsetto backing vocals over his own uh, lead vocal. Just sounds very beautiful together uh, and layered very nicely. Hmm. So, and, uh, and also, he really does sort of uh, command you to listen uh, listen, I mean, just take a look at lines like, 
Why should you have to suffer? Why do you have to march? Because you're in love. 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 Uh, however bleak a picture, all the lines of scripture, anything about acceptance there, uh, there, and it's just uh, so downright beautiful. I mean, uh, some <coughs> I mean, there's some. I mean, uh, some great sort of like a syncopation of the guitar, and bass, and drums. Uh, drums, and they're definitely uh, played uh, with kind of a, a tenderness that uh, doesn't really happen for uh, been some of the other songs on this album. Uh, album, and then also I really like some of the other weirder elements, like uh, there's like like there's this kind of echoey toy piano in the background that I think sounds really nice as well. <clears throat> Ground. Uh, and then we have the song A Great Acceleration, which uh, easily has one of the best, some of the best uh, uh, guitar riffs and drumming on the album. I mean, Jerry Rowe really does show off his skills with the kit on this track. Uh, and really, and sort of bring it in more of the floor toms in there as well. Uh, well, and that guitar riff is going to stick with you right off the bat, like it does majority of the album. Like this album really does show off Phillips' skills as a guitarist. Uh, so, uh, and sir, this song sort of personifies tyranny in all kinds of different ways. It's kind of like a sequel to the song. Uh, the, the King of Catastrophes a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a little bit... Uh, and how it just kind of feels like a great acceleration, a beating of the drum, uh, and some awful recognition of, of sort of uh, the monster that we sometimes become. Uh, come. So it definitely works well as kind of a... Uh, urgent, uh, urgent, high-energy sequel to uh, the kind of quiet yet melancholy King of Catastrophes, uh, catastrophes. and I think uh, the meaning, all the meanings of this, meanings uh, that are incorporated into the song are sort of summarized beautifully in that chorus right there. Uh, and then we have the closing track, Liberation, which, uh, which has uh, almost kind of a, a military marching feel to it. I mean, the drums have kind of that sort of military sort of uh, vibe going on. Uh, so it makes sense that the lyrics uh, are kind of... Uh, it makes sense uh, with its kind of conceptual lyrics. Uh, lyrics about uh, how liberation comes uh, brutal and quick to a toothless old man and a bandaged child. Uh, a hospital and a hospital struck and a temple defiled uh, and uh, this song uh, can be applied to a lot of different uh, uh, meanings uh, it may suggest uh, it, it may suggest uh, stuff from like uh, grim fairy tales or something like that but it definitely can be applied to uh, kind of uh, kind of how it affects our kind of how it affects our world a little bit uh, world a little bit and uh, our society uh, a topic also addressed in songs like uh, another another than boom and stuff like that uh, so uh, even though this song is probably shorter than I'd like it to be uh, it definitely uh, closes out the album on a uh, a really nice note and then uh, and then after this we have a really nice uh, kind of uh, nice uh, kind of sweet little hidden track at the end with Russian Doll, which I, I really like how he compares uh, this uh, girl in his life uh, to uh, be having like six different personalities um, nowadays, uh, which uh, sort of makes her feel like a Russian doll uh, eh, because it could be a different w version of her like every day every day. It could be either uh, the one who promises him the world and more and the one or the one that takes it all away. All away. And it definitely, uh, surprisingly, really does fit in with the concept context of this album. Album with its kind of dark cryptic themes actually, even though it does 
on paper it sounded like just kind of like a, a sweet little like a love song. Love song. And I like how out of the blue he incorporates at the end. How you gonna foot your bill? How you gonna foot your bill? The friend in the Kremlin is a friend in dear. How you gonna cut that deal? Yeah, it's so funny how he like just kind of incorporates uh, writes that at the end, uh, and and then that sort of comes out of nowhere, but somehow really does work uh, uh, with the concept of this album. So yeah, overall, I'm really digging this new album over here. I think Grantley Phillips is still like uh, at the top of his game here. I haven't heard much of his Grantley Buffalo material, but I actually did hear uh, when I saw him live a couple of times, including the most recent one, which was at Yet Brock 20. He, I did get to hear not just songs from the Narrows, but a lot of his old stuff too, like from Grantley Buffalo, along with some of the other stuff that he's also done as a solo artist. And he probably played a new song at that show at Yet Brock 20. But he played definitely a lot more at that show at the Stoltz Listing Room in uh, Easton, Maryland, which is Easton, Maryland. Uh, and I thought they were both really nice, kind of intimate shows. Uh, shows. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to give, either way, I'm going to give Witter Shins a strong 8 out of 10 for sure. Um, uh, the first few times I listened to it, I did sort of like consider 9 out of 10 for the score, but uh, you know, like last time I listened to it, I did see how you know, it isn't necessarily a perfect record, uh, but it's still definitely uh, one of the best of the years, so that's how I kind of changed my score to 8 out of 10 after that. Uh, but I highly recommend you check out this record. Uh, it's it, it sounds like it's probably uh, kind of a return to form for to like his older stuff that he did with Grantley Buffalo, but still, but uh, still feels like a progression and not just some uh, throwaway uh, throwback uh, back. So definitely check this out. That's my review of Wittershins, the new album from Grantley Phillips. I'll see you for episode 199. Two episodes from now, you'll hear my 200th review.